All right. So <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of recording, but uh, I don't know where to begin. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've been fortunate to kind of be, uh, you know, become introduced to you guys uh, over the last few years and get to know you and more in depth, uh, you know, in Boston and uh, get to capture you. I've had the opportunity to capture you, you know, at, touring with the National and, you know, in Boston and playing the horns and stuff. Um, so I guess, like, where to begin, like, how, both of you, why, I guess, like, we'll start at the beginning. What, what drew you to music, I guess? And what drew you specifically to the horns, I guess? Uh, yeah. I would say it was just the pure, in the most pure essence of the sound. It was really <clears throat> just the sound, the sound that you could create with your lips. That was from, for me, it was the very first time I experienced it. I remember, I still remember I was four and uh, my father was friends with a rabbi and I went over to his house and he gave me a shofar, which is like a horn. Mm. And you blow that the same way you blow a brass instrument. And I got a sound out of it and I was, I had, I was it was really clear. I, maybe I got lucky or something, but it just made like a really clear sound. And, like, and then that, that just kind of like sent an electric shock through me. And then I, I always messed around with shofars growing up when I was a kid. And then when I got into public school, I picked up a band instrument and picked up the brass instruments and the horn. And then I stuck with the trumpet by about like age 12 or something. And that was that, that was the end of that. I mean, I just, I found my, I found my thing because it was so much fun to, yeah. uh, make noise on this thing you know and then to be to be a part of something while you're making noise and then to to have have what you do to the first time I felt like what I did impacted other people I think I was like maybe 13 years old hmm. I was playing a concert or something and the next day people were like that was amazing you know and that kind of then you realize oh it's not just me being in my own head like this is actually something that's that's fun for me and fun for other people to mm. experience so that's that kind of like completed this this little circle of like this is meaningful this is worth it and i'm gonna stick with this because it was the first thing i ever stuck with i mean i you know like every kid you pick up all these things you go and try your hand at like basketball i suck at that you know whatever like this was the one thing where i'm like no i'm gonna stick with this and so like by about age 13 I like made my mind up to try and not give up on this and then that just and went from there and then it became like all through high school college and I, I actually majored in music and jazz too but the classical thing was like my focus for many years mm. and then that that it was kind of a roundabout way to get to where I am now but it there's like a through line of the through line is basically like getting a, a, a really pure sound mm. to this day. So that's what I get off on. Mm. Mm. And Ben? Yeah, it's funny because we, <laughs> we both wanted to be uh, French horn players. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is interesting that, that we've ended up, uh, we, we, we've ended up as, as uh, you know, kind of constant roommates, so to speak. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I really, um, I don't know when it came, you know, I was involved in music um, from an early age. My mom um, was a musician. She was a singer. And, and so I was always exposed to music and rehearsals and the, just the, the sort of mechanics of, of music. And, um, and I always loved, um, I always loved kind of really sort of heavy germanic classical music and um and the brass and that really that, that got me into that and and i loved uh the, the the horn parts the french horn parts especially in orchestras and and so i wanted to play french horn and then as fate would have it um a colleague of my mom's recommended um that i start with trombone because it's an easier instrument which to this day makes absolutely no sense because it's not in any way shape or form <laughs> an easier instrument for a kid to be able to reach that stupid slide all the way down and be able to figure out you know where all the notes are and all that stuff um but uh, nevertheless I, I started on, on on trombone and and um 
and before I could get around to, to switching to anything else, yeah, I discovered, um, like Kyle just said, I, I discovered jazz and, and how much I like jazz and, and, you know, I would go out and buy jazz records. So I wanted to play jazz music, but then, um, but then it always kind of pulled me back in the, the sort of the, the weight and the resonance of brass, um, especially in a, in a classical situation. And, um, and that's, yeah, that's, Largely, I'd say how both of us, um, but I'll speak for myself, how, how I approach, you know, how I fit in rock and roll. And I've always played multiple instruments, you know, since I was growing up, I've always played multiple instruments. I played, you know, guitar and bass guitar and piano and everything else. You know, I used um, two boom boxes when I was a kid to record my own songs. You know, I've, I've, I've always been in bands and I've always done done that stuff as well and you know I never and yeah I I guess like so many things um in life I just kind of fell into being sort of having the right timing for like you know horns to be have a a place in in rock and roll and um you know one an early one of those was of course ska music in in the 90s and then and then by the time um by the time you know indie kind of got going with people starting to decide they wanted more orchestrations of their music and and all that stuff. You know, I, I, I kind of was, was around in New York with, with the right pedigree of having always, you know, had my own bands and written my own music and arrangements and, and as well being, you know, an actual sort of quote unquote classical horn player. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So when was the time you guys kind of, first met or linked up because uh curious about that um or did i ask you you know in boston i don't, I don't recall but <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know if we talked about that that but it was right where ben left off with his what with ben was just saying was exactly the point where, where we met mm. being around in new york in like the early aughts or whatever and for i mean ben ben started jumping into that indie thing a little before me but but when i jumped in it was 2006 and ben was Ben was with Sufjan and um, and I, I was around, I was kind of like around that, that pool of musicians in New York at that time that was just doing stuff. And, and there are tons, as you can imagine in New York city, there are always a ton of musicians, but it's about it, it, who's open to doing, cause I, you can easily get into a scene and then not want to do other stuff. Mm. At least you could then. And so I was I was doing like the classical thing, pretty hardcore for like many years. And um, but I always had a I always had like a an openness to do other stuff. So I'd always been like going down to the Lower East Side and playing at the Luna Lounge with my friends, rock band, and all that kind of stuff. And so when the when the Sufjan thing you know made itself available, I was like I thought, well, why not? And Ben Ben was doing that. So that was 2006, and we met we met playing for Sufjan Stevens, and then we. We did a bunch of, uh, we did a, I don't know, a couple of years of tours and a couple of albums. And, mm. and that, that yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's just funny how that, a lot of that stuff from those years kind of branched off into its, its um, yeah, sort of, you could, you could follow, this, follow a bunch of those branches. You definitely, the, the Y music people came out of that as we, we know those guys and we played with them for there. And then, you know, and then we, of course, came out of doing our thing and, and our various connections and, and other, um, other, you know, bands that we've played with, went on to play with and so on and so forth. But yeah. That was a fertile, that was a fertile yeah. period. Yeah. It was either that or I was going to, <laughs> I was, or I was going to, you know, have my own uh, new music ensemble playing for three and a half people and my mom. <laughs> um, music music that 99.9 percent of the world would think unlistenable but <laughs> and, and often i, I so thought i cornered that market <laughs> <laughs> that's always my um my uh my fallback plan is like oh wait a minute this is never the plan to play for lots of people who cares yeah. if no one shows up <laughs> yeah well, speaking of that, was what, what, was it always your your plan, or did you ever you both um, did you ever envision getting this far, like as a as a musician? Because you know, the a lot of musicians like 
you know, aren't fortunate enough to, you know, you know, play with so many, like, you know, basically the entire, you know, indie catalog and, and the tour nationally and internationally. Um, so did you ever have that vision or you just, or did you have a vision of this is, that's it, the, uh, I guess this will be my career or? Um, no, not at all, really. Happened. Honestly, there's no, there's no, there's no plan put forth. There's really no like ambition in that direction. It was just, um, I had come from um, so many situations of just feeling like a fish out of water and feeling really uncomfortable in the classical music world. And I knew the connection I had to it as, as like sonority and sound and energy and, and just the technology of, you know, of putting all those people together and having them play at once is like, it's, it's mesmerizing. But that when it came to the pedagogy and, and actually being in these institutions and the social structure, I, I just, I could never hang. I always just felt like such an oddball. And part of that was because at the same time of pursuing classical music, you know, I was playing um, North Six Basement, and I, you know, playing, you know, the basement of, of Knitting Factory. You know, it's like, I always had my weird downtown New York bands and, uh, and I could just never quite join the two. And so I, so it's not like I had some sort of ambition to be like, oh, okay, I get it. Now yeah. I can use my expertise in classical music and form an ensemble that blends all these worlds and, you know, and, <laughs> and then codify that into some sort of a, a brand. It, it never had anything to do with that. It was entirely like, I'm in this situation. This is so comfortable. I've never been this musically comfortable my whole life. Yeah. And so I'm going to work my ass off not because i want to get up or above anything else or or continue on some sort of path of popularity or success but simply because i want to get every like ounce of 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 goodness out of this uh this situation because i just can't even believe that i actually have a place in the in the world musically speaking that again isn't playing unlistenable unlistenable music to, to five people and my mom yeah, yeah totally um oh man uh, sorry kyle i just sorry, no 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 there, i it's it, it's it's uh my, mine is like a very it's totally um and a lot of similarities to what to ben's journey there and mine it's i could boil mine down to just you know i had i always because i was working as a like an established classical musician in new york but then i found doing this stuff was so much fun it was simply a for me a matter of having the luxury to follow the fun like that's all it's ever been for me mm. it's like my little mantra it's not about ambition um at least not consciously um it's not about devising a plan like ben said like oh i think if i use this to kind of like parlay this into that i can get here it's never been that way for me. It's always just been about following what's fun and like mm. going with what you enjoy. And if you have the luxury to do that, then you're a lucky person. And so, I mean, that's yeah, kind totally. of like, you know, I mean, it's, we're lucky and we've been able to do that. We've been in, in a, you know, combination of like being in the right place, blah, blah, blah. Like you've heard this, the cliches and also just like working hard enough to like, and having whatever skill set we have and, and our inclinations and all that kind of stuff to just be able to, to go with this and enjoy it and so i don't know i mean i'm not very articulate here but basically like i've followed what's fun and mm -hmm. this has been like the most enjoyable um meaningful incredible journey uh, uh, yeah that's really well said i think and uh i, I mean i think just kind of combined with that is you know the being in the right place at the right timing i mean we know plenty of people who've done one tour and just sort of crashed and burned and it's not the right fit you know and it was you know it was it was it was not the easiest you know not the easiest thing to you know to head out on those on those early tours and and keep being like a nice <laughs> functional person and artistically interactive and you know all that sort of stuff yeah. and it just sort of worked yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of curious, uh, when it comes to music, like, you know, I'm more a visual guy, of, of course, with uh, photography and you know, I, I dive into writing and um, painting as well. Um, so I'm exploring, you know, like, 
a visual developing a visual language or a voice and writing or visual language within my photographic uh, images. How do you kind of develop over time your unique uh, sound as an individual horn player, and how do you how does that contribute to say an overarching uh, band composition as well? If that makes sense, I don't, if we can apply those terms, I don't know. Hmm. Wow. That's a cool question. Because I, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna say something real simple, and and I'll, I'll turn it over to Ben because my answer again is like a very simple answer. I think it's a matter of like recognizing what's already there in you. Like it's already my my voice. I mean, I'd never even consider. I never talk about having a voice, but if I were to, I guess I would say, yeah, we all have a voice, and my voice, whatever I whatever I have to say, my sensibility for me, it's it's there. I have to recognize it and let it. Mm and let it express itself without kind of stepping on it. So just in kind of like nour nourishing my own voice, I guess. Um, and I don't, yeah, that's about, that's really for me that it's a simple thing. I don't, I don't think too much about developing, um, developing that, at least not right now, I'm not. Hmm. That's an interesting thing too, because it's like, you know, essentially you're, one is trusting themselves in a situation. And I, and I think that's, that's, you know, to go back to what we were talking about, but before is that's where you really find one really finds their their sort of their artistic home is when that issue of trusting oneself trusting myself isn't an issue it's not a challenge it's just what i it's just what feels right you know and not to to again go too far back into the into the last question but but it's you know it's and that versus this just feeling of like pins and needles discomfort of, of trying to trying to navigate my way you know musically and socially through classical music it, it was just such such a, a juxtaposition that it, it, it wasn't it wasn't really wasn't really again like a conscious thought of, of of establishing you know my voice so to speak that being said I do think I take a sort of constant sonic influence from um, being a multi-instrumentalist and from um, having gotten so, so, so deep uh, my whole life into, um, you know, rock and roll, pretty specifically an alternative rock and roll, <laughs> and indie rock and roll pretty specifically, you know, it's been my whole, my whole life of just being so into that as, as a, as a genre um, and then drawing in these other influences that, um, that that yeah i think that's a lot of sort of where i'm coming from is like it and i i challenge myself on it constantly especially writing music or or arranging you know music for other people there's just, just like what, what you know i ha almost have to make myself stop thinking that there's a right that you know like i i, I like have an idea and that's right you know mm -hmm. like as if there aren't a million other possibilities and, you know it's like it's funny and and I, you know, I think when we were younger and it was just a little more woolly and we could just like, you know, take those tangents you know, wherever they led. And, and now it's, it's sort of nice to have the, the space to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, yeah, I don't have to just go with what, you know, is sort of the most natural um, first thing that comes to mind. Mm. So it's kind of like, I guess what a, a garner is more of like, it's a, it, it's a extension of self uh your yeah. subconscious or your exactly. your soul and just coming out in the chosen medium like i've talked to kind of like say like uh i've talked to so many artists that, you know through this this process and it just seems like they must do do it you know just without you know there's no forethought i you know it's just this is the extension of my my soul whatever the medium it is and uh i find that fascinating and and just and once you find that that one core true thing, uh, you get to you know levels of uh, success or just growth that you would never imagine. Like so, and I'm I'm kind of finding that now in the last few years with cameras. You know, I never imagined. You know, like me, I've kind of evolved into you know later stages of finally identifying myself as an artist. You know, and 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 um, and then finding the camera. You know, in 2016, when I moved, made the move to New York, and it's like that's the only thing I want to do now. You know, and it's been, I've had the, you know, I met Melissa and uh, 
and then she, she's believed in my work ever since. And I've had the opportunity to cover some and, and discovered amazing talent. And, uh, you know, and it's just been crazy myself. So I, yeah, it's, um, it's that's cool. amazing. Oh. And it's cool too, because it's, it's great that, that, I mean, in this way, you know, I think our, our, our culture really, um, idealizes this sort of impossible youth, you know, it, you know, the, the person who manages to like get it together enough to make a record when they're 17 or whatever, mm. you know, and, but it's like, for most artists, you know, he kind of, it takes, it, it, it takes a minute of, of trying different things to sort of figure out what's going to be that thing that you want to do when you wake up in the morning, that thing that's in your head is like, Oh, this is, this is what I want to accomplish today. Like I want to get my hands on my camera. I want to get my hands on, you know, on whatever, you know, and, I mean, I'm going, I'm, I'm taking that idea and I'm, I'm really running with it. Cause like I'm 45 and um, I feel like I'm not there yet. And, uh, and I feel like there's still time, you know, and yeah. I feel like I'm just starting to find some things that I haven't even began, you know, I, I'm just beginning to like explore the idea that there's a door that I can go through mm. or there's another world I can explore. Does that make sense? Like there's something out there more for me to kind of develop and, 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 and again, like what finding that extension of self, but through through other uh, doing more than I've done to this point, right? Right to this point, I've just been a guy with a horn and playing a horn, and that's it's awesome. It's awesome, mm -hmm. but there's there's more there that I haven't really tapped into, and um, so just to kind of just take take this conversation to that point where it's like inevitably going I think is that um this this like this period that we're all in right now has been a has been a, a kind of for I, I you sense that it's for everybody not just us um it's been a, a period of ex exploration and a period of um fertile um it's been very fertile for for exploration of like our craft and our art and and I think we're all kind of doing that and I know I am and it's it's exciting so mm. I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at the possibility of like, yeah, I'm 45, but like, I'm actually like, I'm learning more right now than I have in like many years. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. been a long time since I've been, since I've learned as much as I've learned in the last like two months. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'm doing stuff every day and granted it shouldn't take a pandemic to do that, but there you have it. It did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, you can't choose that. It just happens, you know? And uh, I, I think, I, I, I hope uh, the world can step back and reflect as, as such as yourself too, where we like, what changes can we make and how can, how can we learn from this situation? You know, but, um, yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, what's that song? <laughs> Eat the rich. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no, actually, yeah, it's, like I just turned 35 the other day, you know, April 30th. And it was like, I, I, I was feeling old and, and kind of down for a bit. I'm like, where, where have I gone so far? You know, <laughs> but um, it's been cool. It was a cool birthday because I like, uh, I was fortunate to get a, a personal note from Jack White and uh, a few uh, rare uh, 45s, uh, which, which was cool. Whoa, cool. Yeah. yeah oh, man. And, and uh, uh, a pers personal personal note from uh, Paul Rudd that uh, with a a, well. a a Marvel number one uh, Ant Man from his collection signed. Oh he's no like, way! He's like, oh, happy, crazy. Uh, happy birthday, you son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. awesome. And also, uh, Adam Driver sent me a nice note and uh, uh, image of himself as in, in Star oh, cool. Wars. So it, it's been like very cool. cool. So it's like this is like a culmination of like uh like yeah maybe i was kind of stuck inside i didn't get to kind of have dinner and you know with friends and stuff but it was like an affirmation or a reconfirmation of me to continue this path because it's like so many nice words from all these like you know figures and culture and uh you know that dig my work and, and it was cool it was just like yeah, yeah yeah because i was like 35 what happened to my 20s you know like, yeah, yeah, yeah. now i'm like five years away from 40 so i'm like 
oh man, I'm not that young, but <laughs> I don't know, man. All this, I don't know if anyone's watching any of the the last dance, the uh, the the Chicago Bulls thing. Anyone oh. paying any attention to this? No, I haven't. Yeah, that's okay. on my list, man. I haven't. Yeah, I, I, yes. it out I want yet. to see that. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> a one. The one. Uh, the one upside with being an American sports fan in Europe that has yet to ever happen in my life is that um, I can watch it for free in Europe where you have to pay for it in the States. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just reading this interview with Michael Jordan. He was like all talking about his 50th birthday. I was like, oh my God, that's, that's crazy. And, you know, it's just, anyway, this one point in the article is just like, and I know all you people who are sports, you know, like basketball fans in the 90s are like, all of a sudden just stopped and started doing the math if, as Michael Jordan's turning 50. Anyway, it's just an interesting moment. <laughs> yeah. That's for what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. To, to kind of wrap back to you, just like, kind of like, yeah, I, I do like being this age comparatively to when I was like early twenties or 18. Cause I, I was just kind of messing around and, uh, you know, I didn't know, I like unlike you, yourselves i haven't found i didn't find like a medium i like i have a degree in criminal justice and then uh, a graphic web design kind of certificate and then i've had to kind of let go of a lot of things to fr allow myself to be comfortable with myself as saying i'm an artist like it took, yeah yeah and uh i like myself in the last few years because it's been so cool i've met so many great people like yourselves and it, it's just been a crazy trip so, so far but yeah I, it just coming back to that like there's always more to learn there's always more to you know kind of evolve and uh grow no matter what age um you're at at the point in time and uh, i think yeah. sometimes like wine we, we age better you know like a fine wine we age you know better with age i guess and to be cliche but or kind of, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. So Ben, uh, do you, well, I think, uh, oh, sorry. Go no, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to, I was just going to add that it's also for, for people who like to do many different things, even if it's all in the same discipline, but just pursue many different things. It just takes more time. Yeah. You know, True. if you're, if you're gung ho about one thing, like playing a piano concerto, that's all I want to do mm. aside from eating and sleeping then yeah it's, it's gonna have a lot more figured out by the time I'm 16 then that's true you know? yeah that's <laughs> true yeah you're just like dead focused yeah. on one thing like MJ just gonna yeah, be a exactly. basketball yeah it was like that's yeah, it exactly yeah 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 <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah it's crazy but most of us <laughs> we're not just like <laughs> you know like yeah I'm gonna be yeah. all-time greatest basketball player in the world <laughs> yeah yeah wait can i still do that is it too late or well maybe for you <laughs> well in the physicality form i guess so yeah but <laughs> oh yeah <All> right. <laughs> well that's the good thing about music you get you know, like i've i recently I talked to you uh you know uh emilio castillo uh of uh, tower of power which is cool super yeah. cool played for you know fi over 50 years of tower of power and, and like that's wow. amazing like to have yeah. that longevity you know it's yeah. like and i'm also amazed with like the stones just constantly they're still out there you know it's still yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think yeah, they released music a, and, yeah. a new new track about the pandemic recently but, yeah yeah um yeah it's, it's just crazy but that's the thing with like music and art you, you know you, you can continue you know throughout your your time span comparatively to say sports where it's like you have to be like 20s you know, and then when you get yeah. to this this point in the game, you kind of like retire, unless you're like Tom Brady. You know, uh, yeah. but now yeah. now he's with the Bucks, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. He's sort of retired, basically. Yeah, he's, yeah. It's like <laughs> he did retire to Florida, so he's kind of being. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I know um, Kyle. You must be happy now. You know, Brady's out of the AFC East. <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe maybe the bills will have one this year we'll give them the afc yeah it'll be two minutes of uh to an empty stadium possibly yeah yeah but maybe uh, you know yeah. <laughs> well it's weird though you know it's like you know brady not being in, in the afc you know and now he's in the nfc in tampa and it's a weird weird thing but yeah. who knows if, yeah, and Gronk heading down there too. What the freaking heck? Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, 
<laughs> not to steer it there. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Now it's a sports talk. <laughs> sports radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Like, with this, I'm just like, we'll see where the conversation goes. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. A weird. It's like, you know, you recognize, like, when MJ tried to play baseball, it wasn't right. It, like, that's weird. Yeah. And then, yeah. then yeah. you have a stint yeah. with the Wizards, too, and that, that's... You know, you associate yeah. an icon yeah. with just one team or one yeah. one thing, but yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and if you want a player coach, then it's got to be Paul, Paul Newman playing for uh, whatever the hockey team was, the slap shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at that time, like, I, you guys, like, around 2006, you kind of you guys kind of linked up or, you know, kind of – first introduced each other, you know, were introduced to each other, you know, Bay Roots and uh, stuff. When did you kind of link up with Nashville and start, like, working with them? Or was that so around the same time? Was, um, yeah, it was actually directly linked. There's mm -hmm. a direct connection because we, in 2007, I believe it was, or six, it was late 2006, we went on a tour to Europe with Sufjan, but Sufjan put together this, like, sort of like a dream team band we used to call it band camp because it was just like this big gaggle of musicians from New York all together touring through Europe, playing this like fanciful music. And he added Bryce Destner on the guitar um, in the band. And Bryce was already, you know, they was already doing stuff with the national. The national was already like in its maybe third or fourth record cycle. Um, so it was like early, but mid to early part of the nationals kind of rise. Hmm. Yeah. Um, they just, and, just uh, released boxer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just released Boxer, which was like a critically acclaimed, you know, big success. And so Bryce was with us and we was, I mean, he was, he and I were like rooming for part, we were like roommates for part of that tour. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and we, and we, didn't, and we wouldn't, he's, he was quiet and I was kind of quiet, but, but you know, we were there, we knew about each other and, um, and we were playing in the same band together for a whole few weeks and Ben and the, th the three of us were there. And then, so when, when a few months after the wrap of that tour, the national was doing a tour. Um, actually, was it the David Letterman show the very first? Thing? No, it was, it was, uh, they, they, they did um, a few nights at Bowery ballroom. They did like four nights at Bowery ballroom. And that was like a triumphant, sort of gig for them to, to sit to have like a little mini residency at the Bowery Ballroom in New York City and so they were they thought okay well, we should beef this up with some brass and so I jumped in on that and then the David Letterman thing happened after that which had brass part for that um and so we jumped in Ben and I jumped in on that and that that was a lot of fun and then the next thing that happened where they thought oh well this brass really kind of like raises the uh the sonority of this whole thing was the mm. tour in 2000 what was it 2008 or was it it was opening for rem going on tour all around opening for rem oh, so that was our first like so, legit tour with them yeah 2008 then because yeah it was 2000 well, that was australia when we we were in um that's right australia we were in australia with with sufjan and then yeah we had made an agreement to just stay in Australia because it dovetailed perfectly with a national tour. And so they asked us if we wanted to stick around um, and do those dates with them, you know, for the Sydney fest and, and I forget what else. Yeah. And so we did. That, and that, and that, yeah. And then, that was then it. it just kind of stuck and we did REM and uh, <clears throat> yeah. The Australian thing was actually, I mean, I, I should mention, I don't know if Ben's like, I, I, for me, in my mind, the Australia thing, and it, it was it was important. And the reason it was important was because, um, sort of psychologically, I think for everybody, it was important because when we were in Australia with Sufjan, we had already agreed, like Ben said, to do these extra to stick around a few days longer and play a few extra shows with the National, as as their you know brass guys and stuff, and and then and uh, they're not, like on a whim Sufjan just like decided to take these to play these shows in Japan and then book tickets to Japan and then kind of turned to Ben and me and was like all right you guys come in we're going to Japan now and we we um at that point we were it was a really tough tough thing but we we said no to Sufjan which we had never done before 
um, because we said, well, I'm sorry, but we've already agreed to stick around here and play these shows with the national. And I think for the guys in the national, I think that was psychologically like a, that was a, a show of, a show of good faith and it was kind of meaningful to them. And so that, that kind of started a, a nice, you know, a nice relationship that's carried, carried through to now, I would say. Would yeah, agree, for ben, sure. That, that was kind of yeah, for sure. Thing. Yeah, because I mean, it, not only yeah, not only was us you know our integrity and being like no you know we've committed to this thing we're not gonna you know in kind of the world where we came from you know at least in studying and all that you know it was like yeah you gotta gotta have that integrity but it was also you know I think for for the national was like you know the whole Brooklyn scene looked up to Sufjan in those years and right had anyone do anything the when they could them. be playing japan with Sufjan? it's like whoa really yeah. us right yeah <laughs> you know i think they even i mean they even said as much like they felt validated by the fact that we that we did that mm. you know because at the time they weren't they were like like we said they were getting bigger but they weren't like giant or anything mm. and Sufjan was yeah. like yeah Sufjan was the indie god at that time so it was like yeah. i mean he's you know for rightfully so yeah. or whatever but like yeah it was just, it was just a timing thing and so it was very meaningful and that and then so it went from there and then more and more touring from there so yeah 2008 was kind of the the strong oh, the kind of strong bonds were formed hey guys i'm really sorry i'm gonna have to jump off in a minute um i, I hope i'm not cutting cutting my participation too short um, okay. but i'm realizing we're, we're like we're cru cruising into various um <laughs> complications of evening time in europe with two little kids okay uh, um well ben you just to make note of your new project out or you knew uh oh yeah yeah you kind of want to just speak about that or, like real quick or before you yeah it, it it's uh it's it's super meaningful uh, to me on on sort of multiple levels um one of which is just that uh that i really am proud of the music and proud of the work um that that kid uh kid millions and i put into it um and we've just it's something we've been meaning to do together for a long time and we just had this about you know year window of time when we actually had uh, time off at the same then could get together um, and hang out and you know maybe head down to a basement and and uh, and just improvise some music together and eventually um, we just thought it'd be a good, good idea to start recording stuff and and uh, and so then I had this sort of whack of, of music just to sift through and find uh, cool bits and and um, and it really it, I think it came together super well and and um, yeah, hold on, guys. One second. One second, Rox. Uh, sorry. Um, but I, I just I, I want to add to that that um, in 1990, let's see, five, six, must have been 1997, I was at Purchase College uh, and heading down in the city, you know, constantly as it was like 30 minutes on the train. Um, and I had my, my weirdo uh, noise no wave band and um and dropped off a tape at the knitting factory mm. and then got a call back, back and uh and kid at the time was booking for the knitting factory basement and so that's how we met he, he like <laughs> loved the tape and so we started playing shows and they formed he, he was just forming the band Oneida and we did shows together would have him up at purchase and do various shows around and and so I've known him a long time um and we kind of you know have 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 been in better touch and been in worse touch at various points over the years, but we've never actually done a music project together, which just seems crazy, especially now that we have. And it's, it's just been so, so rewarding to have this thing out in the world. And I also feel like it's just this very, as we were talking about before, when you're talking about these sort of like things that just feel natural and like they, they, they just feel like a comfortable artistic space. Um, and that's really what that feels like to me, you know, combining these, these really obvious influences of like me being, you know, so, so just into, um, you know, 70s Miles Davis and, and, um, 
as well as you know the kind of post-punk and goth and and no wave and new wave and all this sort of stuff and and combining all these things together and you know um playing multiple instruments at the same time and just trying to make that work um instead of having a you know a band a room full of people of, of sort of trying to distill this uh this this sort of you know kind of um jazz experimental collectivism of the 70s and but then putting that through the filter of like a sort of 90s duo hardcore lightning bolt aesthetic of like well actually we're only two people yeah. uh you know um so i i think you know i'm 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 really happy with how it turned out but thanks yeah. for asking oh yeah <laughs> no i actually just ordered a uh vinyl today for uh oh cool nice yeah oh, yeah I was like, <laughs> I could have gotten you one of those. You didn't have to order that. I I knew that, but I was like, I'll, I'll support you. You know, send some cash your way, or um, the the um, you know, uh, it kind of reminds me. I just discovered the other oh, like months ago or maybe a year ago, kind of uh, this album from DJ Crush and uh, Tasha Nori uh, Kondo. It's like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's like this experimental jazz and and like beats and it just like. I mean, I just love that stuff, like just instrumentals and just like, you know, it, it, get, it hits me at a different level and it, it's it's cool. So I'm looking forward to listening to the vinyl too. Yeah. yeah. But. Oh, cool. Yeah. The, yeah. I'm psyched about the vinyl. It's just, it's such a different experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't pressed any, any of my other solo records onto vinyl just, you know, and, and, but I think this one really like just really, re I think resonates well with that. Cool. Well, well, Ben, um, I'll let you go, you know, take care of uh, the the children, I guess. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for your time and conversation. Well, I lose Ben? Or, I guess so. Or <laughs> he's frozen. Oh. Yeah. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Are you still, uh, you have a few, still have a few minutes, Kyle, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm hanging. I just see Ben frozen uh, below me. It's weird. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't... Huh. That's weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This, oh, there, oh, he okay. must have just like, um, yeah, he must have just kind of just got off the, the call because he couldn't it froze up a bit but yeah you know this technology yeah. is so so kind of like sketchy a bit <laughs> yeah it's, it's a little wacky yeah it's a little yeah. weird but getting getting used to it not really getting used to it. you'll never really get used to it or at least i won't but yeah but i've been i've been talking with a lot of people on it and um i'm noticing that like not surprisingly people like the younger they are the more just get the more used to it they get yeah you know it's just like they take it for granted it's like that um like you know they grew up uh in the digital age like where you know i'm 30 like i said 35 we're on the cusp of you know the the digital age so i i still re of course remember dial-ups and uh you know pagers and you know stuff like mm -hmm. that you know but it's like i did have a conversation with a younger musician the other day he's around 20 i'm like do you even know what i am uh, a dial-up sounds like, do you even know what that tone is? Like, it's weird because, you know, it doesn't exist anymore, really. I mean, yeah, yeah. in a <laughs> physical sense, but uh, yeah. um, it's weird, man. But so what have you been up to uh, or during this time? Have you yeah. been, uh, been working on any uh, solo stuff or what have you been up to? So, well, it's fu funny enough, like about a year ago, Ben's um, calling in. I, oh, okay. It's good to just shut yeah, it, down. <laughs> I didn't mean that to be some sort of mic drop. <laughs> oh, no, it was like, I figured uh, I figured you had to go, oh, wow. but you, you kind of just froze. And, uh, you know, it's technology, I guess, <laughs> the technology. But when you try to call, when you try to, yeah. you know, call in again, I, I kind of lost connection with, uh, you know, Kyle. So um, I had to re restart oh, this. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, it's, so sorry weird. about that sorry Listen. about that yeah totally who knows so I, yeah i'll blame it on europe <laughs> yeah yeah that's true yeah 
You can always blame things on Europe. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But oh, well, I was just. Uh, it's only fair. Well, if you if you have to go take care of the kids, I, I, you can sign off. Uh, you know, I just want to say thank you for your conversation and, and your time too, and be well. Everybody, I hope everybody's safe and uh, sound out there. Or over. thank you, and 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 likewise. Yeah, I just I just really thank you so much for just you know the our our talks have always been been really really nice, and and I look forward to having more whenever open up again. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping, uh, yeah, yeah I, hopefully, in, you know, music can start again and the live experiences will, uh, can, can continue forward because like, I'm, I'm missing that aspect of, you know, capturing, yeah. you know, that, that energy, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, you know, this, yeah. Is, this energy can only go so far via, you know, you know, in, the, in front of a screen. I, I love being, you know, in a venue you know, just listen with that raw energy of the people and music, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is it is a totally different energy and it, yeah, opens us up. Um, all right, well, I apologize that, that I'm, but I'm, my, my six hours of difference are catching up with me, so I better get off. <laughs> uh, no <laughs> but, uh, worries, Ben. Uh, but, but if you want to try another time too, guys, it's totally, that's, that's great, but uh, yeah, this, yeah it's, let me know. Yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, uh, thank you so much and uh, be well. And uh, enjoy. Thanks. Yeah, we'll catch up soon. Is it even? Yeah, uh, let's do it. Evening? Yeah, like late night or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then? About 7, 7 p.m., yeah. Okay, enjoy your night then or evening. All right, thanks. All right. All right, Bye. Guys later. Take care. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's always like, it's a weird experience ending these things. It's like, oh. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, conversation's kind of done, but then you have to like, there's a moment of like <laughs> stop recording. Where's the red thing? Yeah, yeah. How do I get out of a meeting smoothly? Still haven't figured it out, but <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's at least everyone's in the same boat. That's what I sort of uh, come to realize. So it's all good. That's true, but <laughs> it's just like you can't do much about it. You know, it's, it's no. just uh, this, just uh, the world we're in at this moment. But what have what have you been up yeah. to like during this time? Like um, I've been. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, uh, so I was saying, I was about to say about about a year ago now. Um, kind of had one of those, you know, long and hard, difficult conversations with my wife. Um, obviously, a year ago, so way before this was on the horizon, um, and that sort of started a started me down a a hard look at like what other other things um, that I. I don't, I don't like to use the word should, but, you know, can be looking at, can be pursuing um, just kind of like things to explore. And one of those things was something that I had had the luxury of avoiding um, my whole life until, until I decided not to avoid it anymore. And that's, the, that's recording. I mean, I've always, I've always been a professional musician and I step into a place and someone else does all the recording and I just play my horn. Mm. Um, and so, and I, and because I've avoided all that, I had no, you know, the more you avoid something that the scarier it is. Right. So yeah. you just, you know, nothing about it and you keep knowing nothing about it and it just becomes harder and harder to actually ever do know something about it. So to, to kind of like jump over that gap was a little bit tough, but so it took me several months finally, you know, talking myself up, talking to friends about it people like and including ben i mean i talked to ben about it, talked to the guys in the band about how to how to kind of start getting that going and so finally i amassed enough equipment in my attic and during this uh, so jump to now how what have i been doing i've been kind of getting that going and and i'm happy to say that it's though it's been a lot of sleepless nights and and like learning how to get things good um i've i've had some things i'm pretty pretty happy with it i've done uh recording my mm. both myself and my wife who's a, a violin my wife is like actually like a world-class violinist so oh. when she plays it's like incredibly professional incredibly she doesn't fuck around basically she 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 just nails it and mm. so if we want to do stuff it's really um 
if there's ever put it this way if 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 i record her and something isn't right it's probably my fault you know it's mm-hmm. something technical that's wrong right but so i've been kind of recording her a little bit for some for a couple of projects that um friends of ours have asked us to do things that you know stuff that'll be you know you, know, you might hear it at some point um and it's been it's been cool and i've been recording myself uh playing late at night mm. for various people that have been asking me to do stuff on their recordings both playing on the trumpet and also i've been um singing because i've been doing a lot of backup singing um mm-hmm. with the national for the last several years it's been more and more a part of what i do um which i really enjoy um it's i'm not for i'm not uh I, I'm a formally trained musician, but I'm not a formally trained singer at all. So yeah. <laughs> it's just more of a, an extension of like, it's all kind of connected to, for me. I don't really sing in any way that's like properly, uh, prop, I don't have proper technique or anything like that. I don't think, mm-hmm. I don't think about the, 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 the singing aspect of it. I just do it. But uh, it seems to work for, for a lot of like what we do. So, so I'll, I'll record my back backing vocals for people and, and the trumpet of course and so that's been you know it's been really a lot of fun and it's also been very good for my um feeling of of i had i've let's just put it this way it's it's helped me to feel a little more unstuck yeah. if that makes sense because that's it was cool. something I, I wasn't doing i was kind of afraid of it and then finally with the encouragement of my wife encouragement is a nice word it was more like she was like, what is it? you know, get, take care of this, you know, get, get on this already. Um, strong encouragement, shall we say. Um, yeah, that's, it's been something that I finally started to do and break, break free of the, 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 the ice block, the ice dam that I, that was my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah, you, you do something kind of so long and, and kind of, you have that, you know, pattern of, uh, or maybe a routine, I guess. And then you know, like, or as any creative, it's like in like you, you pointed out earlier, it's like at the how do I go further, you know, beyond yeah. what I've built already? How do I push myself to another level of you know, creative um problem? Yeah. What is what all this is making me realize, I mean, and we've heard this all before, but it's a reminder, is that like comfort is a comfort is a dangerous thing. Mm. Mm. You know? We all need comfort a little bit. We all need comfort. Humans need, all, all creatures need comfort in some way at some time. But you got to be careful because it's very, very quickly, before you know it, comfort, if you have too much of it, it creates stasis. Yeah. I know, like, I have friends that, you know, have kind of more of a templated kind of like, they went to college, they got the corporate job, and there's just, now it's like, they they kind of flat you know they have you know they married kid like just have kids sure. but it's kind of like templated they never you know they sure. work in offices and uh, and and they don't go out of their comfort zones you know and they yeah. just, but they were never the really types and it was like right. it was never me like I I love life I love exploring different theories uh, you know seeing different um, aspects of life too so it's like along with the good i love the struggle because that's where you see you have a different viewpoint of the world if yeah if you stayed in a plateau and comfort in this comfortable yeah. bubble you would never yeah. understand the rest of humanity or how other people right. and that's why i like mo- up and moved to new york and it was like the city of brooklyn and i've had my issues there but it's like i've seen a, a lo- i have a different a larger um I guess viewpoint of the world at hand and how you know other people are living and, and struggling to kind of survive as well. So it's like that's why I often like tell people to kind of travel as well because if they don't travel, it's like you st- you're, you're kind of limited with your your scope of thought. But you know, um, yeah, I guess yeah, it's like I I always have to do something different myself. So I, I so it would be cool. So are you? I don't know, to end that thought, sorry, I kind of, um, do you, do you have, is it lyrical uh, too? Do you write lyrics for your, this stuff you're recording now? I, no, I have not written any, 
that would be a, a step beyond what I've even considered at the moment. But I have, I mean, not to say never say never, but no, I have not. Hmm. I have not been writing lyrics or doing anything. It's been strictly musical. Hmm. Uh, yeah, just get it, you know, like firing up that, firing up those engines a little bit, you know, yeah. getting stuff doing. E- even even if it's even if it means like something goofy and fun, like bringing my son hmm. upstairs and like getting a bunch of bottles and sticks and you know, like just oh, getting yeah. something going. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's that's it's all it's all it's all part of it. And so now, are you still instructing as well at the university? Or? Yeah, a little bit. Um, that's been that's been cool. I've been kind of folding that in to some of this this learning. Um, so I, I run like a little ensemble there. Um, it's a very very small. It's just a tiny little project that I that I do over there and um, with some of the some of the students. And uh, obviously, because we're not meeting, so then I, what I do is I have them just send me their send me their stuff that they record like just on their phone yeah like and then they they do it by themselves in their attic or whatever and then they send it to me and then i take it and i like you know put it all together and so that's been even that in and of itself has been a part of this whole process of like learning stuff and me figuring out how to do stuff i didn't know how to do and Mm. you know stuff like that again like it's not i'm not trying to make it sound like it's a big deal it's for most people it's not but for me it was because i hadn't done it before so it's like learning to learning a totally new skill Mm. um so that it took it took a little time now i'm getting it and it's it's a lot of fun so Mm. that's that's something i've been doing with with you know on that side and then so you know down the road i might um i might get into like doing i've been like writing keeping notes and writing things down for like possibly offering a course someday just like an overview kind of a course Mm. on, on like the working musician kind of a kind of a topic um so I've, I've been developing that but that's not that's like a long long-term project mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. what i know you guys or the the natural was uh, scheduled you know you had a, like a european tour this year um is the whole year just kind of x'd out now or um we are in like a holding pattern well so yeah kind of in a holding pattern we're gonna wait and see and i know in all re- likelihood at this point right now april 20 something whatever we are we oh yeah we only know you know we 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 can pretty much we can pretty much safely say that summer's out Hmm. end of summer i don't know fall maybe we salvage some stuff i mean we had we had stuff scheduled up through december you know yeah yeah um so i mean we'll see what gets salvaged and what gets rebooked and that's yeah that's a higher that's beyond my pay grade to even know about oh yeah 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 i was just kind of curious um because uh yeah it's just like this whole like how do we get you know large events back together again you know it's like is there going to be certain procedures like how do you get groups like for auditorium kind of stuff together you know like i don't i don't know how without you know like a certain a a solid vaccine or you know something because it's like okay we can open up again but we don't we never had a solution the solution was kind of let's all stay away from each other it kind of flattened everything and now people are like let's open up again and we don't have a a solution so so it's kind of like i'm kind of kind of tipping myself of like will uh or nervous i guess of like will with some slow slowly opening with the the world slowly opening will we see a drastic rise in uh cases again and um who knows Uh, seems like we would oh yeah logically wouldn't it it just seems like (laughs) we would but uh yeah but anyway so yeah it's scary man yeah, but um, I guess uh, I guess I'll let you go too, man. Like I know you you have uh, children as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, thank you, and uh, Ben as well for the conversation. It's uh, oh man, yeah, it's yeah. I agree with Ben. It's a pleasure, and it's it's really nice to talk with you, and and uh, very 
enjoyable and easy and, and well, yeah, i hope is, uh, i nice. hope i i can see you guys live this year or you know but i'm looking forward to uh if you ever you know like put out into the environment the environs or the, the universe yourself your your other your, you know per, your personal recordings i would you know that'd be cool to hear as well because i love just the eclectic sound so if you break away and, and experimental stuff is kind of like my bread and butter the core stuff i really <laughs> dig because it's just like so visceral and abstract and you can tell you know the the person or the the perform um individuals are just playing around and experimenting with these you know different sounds or different levels of complexity and it's it's fat and, and you know it's uh it's cool it's cool um but yeah yeah i'm like i said i'm finding more in the i'm in the process of finding all that and um not to i don't know what's gonna be i haven't held myself to any kind of like oh i have to put something out of this you know it's that's not where i am with it but i'm just kind of like finding my thing and i'm also in the you know doing these projects for for people and that's been a, tremendously enjoyable to like to use what i know how to do um on the instrument and musically i already have that that skill but to actually use that to like make it happen technically mm -hmm. recording it and then getting it out there and, and then making other people's music better so mm -hmm. it's just that's been really 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 uh fun for me and um it's also i feel like not only is it fun but it's important to you know it's important to be able to do that especially now right because yeah. you're not you know so so that's kind of uh yeah that's where i am right now but yeah one of these days maybe yeah. if there is something out there i'll let you know and <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure for sure yeah man it's it's it's, yeah. it's always a pleasure to catch up with you guys and it was awesome you know when i caught up with you it had the opportunity to shoot you guys in uh, boston hope you enjoyed some of the photos at least oh they're oh uh, my god they're awesome yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, i'm that probably was cool I'll probably be hitting you up for permission. Like, hey, can I put this? You know, yeah, so yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, those are beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. It was so, yeah, it was just fun, man. Um, no, it's weird though. It's like, she's just to kind of wrap uh, some eyes. It's like, you know, a few years ago, I didn't know who, you know, the National were. And now I've, I've met you guys. I've uh, recently I just talked to Tom, you know, and then Matt popped in randomly on, on this. And it was like, yeah. hey, you know, I've, uh, you know, I think I've been to his show, you know, I've covered, the national now like at least four times you know at least uh, you know for documents yeah. and and i've got to kind of know you guys and um you know talk to uh, tom I, i've had coffee with uh i mean graham you know uh you know, back and doe and talk photography mm -hmm. a bit. and so it's like i don't know it's weird it's been a weird kind of like evolution and you get to understand uh you know the aspects of the you know different aspects and the components of the band and uh it's been cool it's been a cool journey and uh thank you so much for your time man and uh yeah <laughs> no, i'm glad to, i'm glad to know you man it's, yeah, it's same cool. same uh with you sir um i hope all is well up there in, in buffalo still correct yeah 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 that's good I'm surprised you do you still have snow up there <laughs> like that's crazy. i mean believe it or not it was snowing until like a week ago yeah yeah it's crazy yeah. but uh I don't know. Yeah, the AFC East will be uh, weird this year. Um, <laughs> yeah. If actually football and well, any if they even get the season off, I don't even know how. Like, will be empty stadiums like the WWE or something? I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so, yeah. but uh, all right, man. Um, yeah, be well. And uh, okay, I hope, you too. I hope uh, your family is well as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take, stay safe. Take care, sir. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.